each note legatissimo you must get to the point that's it Beethoven remains constantly contemporary completeness and the innermost nature of the human condition. It is about the necessity to push yourself to the limit. It does not shy away from the extremes. That out of chaos, out of strife, comes a new order. I was born in Bari. It's an Adriatic town on the east coast of Italy, southeast. Quite a big village, not a huge town as you can imagine, but uh, it's a very interesting um, mix of people because it's a bit poor. My first actual physical contact with a musical instrument happened really by chance. It was Christmas time, and the local toy shop, as you can imagine, was uh, totally overcrowded with people because sales were on, and the only, the only aisle which was not crowded was the musical instrument aisle. They started and they just couldn't take, take me off this keyboard. I really loved it. I was seven, about seven years old. And I entered the conservatory at nine and I finished up the program in five years. And eventually they offered me a scholarship to go studying in the States in Dallas when I was 16. I always wanted to be a musician, but from that to actually deciding to be a musician, you start realizing what it takes. Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome, please, for Maestro Daniel Barenboim yes. and Alessio Bach. The amount of work and commitment it takes, it's not something you just enjoy and love to do on the side. I think that's the key moment when you really start taking it seriously.
Nej, nej, jeg altid det. Bravo, Amish. It's really quite a remarkable degree of, of, of clarity and, and control. You know that there are a few places where you tend to, to hurry. We, we all do. Yes. We all do. Uh, I suppose I've never understood why it is that when it gets difficult and uh, we are not in control, rather than take the time to have more time to control it, we all tend to hurry. But I mean, you know that. I don't have to say that. But whenever you, you, know, you, you got yourself in control, there was a tremendous amount of, of clarity. I think the only thing I want to say about, uh, about that is that um, maybe you should be a little bit, maybe you could be a little bit more careful in how much volume and then you give how early. Right. I think that you might find that you had exhausted most of the possibilities too soon. And it was very difficult for you then to, 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 to make the last attempt, the last momentum. And it's not the case, the case of the saying, you know, sometimes less is actually more. It's not just a question, it's just a question of, 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 planning. of planning. That you find a way to play clearly and emphatically, yet with less volume. The beginning of the fugue, uh, I felt very much that, you know, already here. For, the, for a pianissimo, it was already, you were already in a mezzo piano. And then by doing this, you reduce also the, the dynamic range that you have even in, 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 the, in the short term. But before we get uh, to that, um, I want to just maybe go through with you a little bit the, the, to, through the introduction, because the, the, the problem with the introduction, of course, is where it comes from. You know, this is a very commonplace, just broken octaves. What is the sense? What is the purpose of it? And then you start going in this. So now you a step further in your knowledge. And you say, and then you play this. Aha. Uh -huh. It's a search for tonality. And this is not enough. So you move one more. And then you're there. And this is not enough. And you have move one more. And you're there. And you stop. And then you have to ask yourself the question, why? Why does it stop then? Why doesn't it go? I don't know. Why does it stop there? And that is, of course, because this is where the slow movement ends. So when, after you play, you are back there. So this is not just broken octaves, but it is like the op opening of the curtain. It has a, it has a, a gesture in it. Something that always, it's not just, even with, you know, without the, the last movement. Why don't you play the, with, without the slow movement, I mean, yeah. what you have to remember. I think this is, this is really very good. I think after you have played, I, w I, would op I would play it a little bit more open. It's still a little, it stays a little bit, so it doesn't give you the possibility to go for a search after that. I think this is really, shall we say, piano plus, no? And then the first one can be, must be a continuation of that. Don't make a sensitive change, you know, no. Mm -hmm. 
nothing. Uh huh. Maybe a little more. And this must be less, because that's where you're going to land. That's where you're going to stop. So that you have the feel, you give really very clearly the feeling of the search and then having found a place to land, which then serves as a base to build up the rest of the introduction. That's it. Remember that and continue that. Yes. How's your friend? Minor? Whoops. That's it. Very good. Yeah, this is very good. You get a very beautiful veiled quality in all that. Wonderful. But then, then you, you must somehow already give the foretaste of the counterpoint, of the clarity. Not... Obviously not that, but also not. And only there you get the chord. And this, you must really, I think, feel the tension in the chromatic and get to the dominant. And then this is a resolution of that. It's not, I'm afraid, like you play it like an abit. It's, it's the end of that. Okay. Maybe. You, you play it, not necessarily, but, but play it so that one, that one really, that the E flat sustains. Again. Yes. Also, if you play this with so little pedal, which you do, which I think is wonderful, you must really impose that on the different voices, on the soprano, on the alto, and on the bass. Don't play. Now you need the pedal. You only need the pedal when the harmony gets tense. And I'm not, sorry, I'm not convinced about the second E flat because it has a, such an important function. It, uh, uh, function. it is our poggiatura and it is also the dominant to where you're going. You must be living. Think, put a real good consonant on it. Something like that. Yeah, go on, go on. Yeah, we are back to this magic of the third. Oh, I'm going on the third. And if you have established the first time that you are in search of a tonality. And then when you finally find a place to land, it is softer. It's very important. You know, I think after you have done, and you have landed here, is you need, you need a more open and a more, yes, open, shall we say, objective sound. Mm -hmm. gives you the possibility of this. Still not too soft. It is not dreamy music. It's a search for tonality. It's different. And now you can do this. Try to play it once really without pedal. You don't need a pedal. Now, stay like this open, open sound, and more. Now you're, now 
now you are in the mystery. But all this must be to break. It's a breaking of the pattern that we are used to. Palm, plum, palm, plum, plum. Mm. Yes. So, so uh, you see, you. But, but that's why I try to uh, to to uh, explain to you why to play this one. This one has to. One has to see the, the relation between the two. Right. This, and this is something completely different, but there's even a similarity of the, of the, of the thing. But, and the sound that you get here, this, this kind of sound, uh, rather articulate and very clear, I think is what you need here. You c must come out of this sort of uh, haze and, and uh, and dream of the slow movement, and you know, and, and back in, in the real. Maybe you play from uh, from there. So. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let you please be careful that when you get more sound, that you don't lose the legato. You know, yeah. you, you bring in legato, and then you play. Nothing special, but now. Yeah, yeah, go on, go on. Yeah, there must be, sorry, there must be, there must be some temporal relation to what oh, you played. I would think double, no? This is, it's a clear case of a double. That. Play me that now. No, play double. Yeah, but make the crescendo really to the end. And then you will get, you know... Then you get the silence louder as the sound, what we were talking earlier. But not... That's it. That's it. Yeah. What is the dynamic there? What is the dynamic there? It's uh, mezzo forte. Huh? It's mezzo forte. What is it? Huh? Right there? No, after that. Largamente. No, no, where is the other? The other? You had the other edition. Now you got some. <laughs> you got some funny edition now. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Largamente. I, I thought it was. I thought in the in the in the old text said there's another temp, another dynamic indication. I may be wrong, but, but in any case. Once you have finished that and you're, you, you could... It must be different from this. It opens up. It must open up and the, uh, and the, and the reason for that is that you must get to the point that... Largo mended is definitely original. And I think this figure is a figure of a recitative figure. It's a, a figure of, of freedom. It, it must not be a, a note uh, per note. But I think in any case, you must. This is very uh, unexpected. You expect that. And that's how you should really you should play it. You know, when you're going. This is 
what the ear expects. You always assume when you're repeating a pattern, the ear is extraordinarily intelligent and remembers everything. And the ear says, I have heard this before, that's where he's going. And suddenly you show... That, you know, that you obliterate all memories with that. And that is the motivation for this freedom. And not too soft, otherwise you have nowhere to go to, to, to that. It's a very important surge of sound there. Yeah. Three different three trills with different speeds. You know, don't play. It's mechanical. This is a faster the tension, the faster trill. You must have three trills of with different speed so that they have a different function. At the end of the trill with a D natural, make uh, uh, clear that it becomes faster and that forces you, there must be a motivation why you go from the D natural to the D sharp. Now, you see how now it's very clear how you play yum pa dum pi hum pum. When you get to the precision, dum pum pa dum pum pa. If you go beyond the speed where the ear can actually understand that the rhythm is there, it means it's too, it's too fast. Mm -hmm. So keep this rhythm very clearly in your brain so that when you get to the prestissimo, you still have the cl clarity of the rhythm. It's like a procession, isn't it? Yum, pa dum, pa. 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 And the third, no, no, no. Oops. Yeah. Okay. It's very important. Now I understood exactly. <laughs> and then when you get, unless you when you get, I'm not so sure I would play all that with so much pedal. Mm -hmm. Because now you have played, you have played 25 minutes or whatever it is of the slow movement, and you have played an introduction all veiled in sound, all covered in waves of pedal and thing, and now you need to establish a, a, a temperature of the lowest uh, point. We always speak of the. Uh, climax of the culminating point, we forget sometimes that the low point is just as important, if not more, because if that is not low enough, the high point will never be high enough. And you have to create here this the lowest possible climb. You know, it's like uh, you know, your d temperature drops really well below the normal, so that you have to create. That you get to that, you must start here. If you start, you have already reduced it. Sorry, sorry. Lift the pedal. 
Lift the pedal. You don't need any pedal. Play it once without pedal. One, two, three, yum, yum, yum. Yeah. You're faster than you play the fugue after that. Now, now. Yeah. You see, this obviously has no connection with the introduction, it has no connection with the slow moment, it has no connection with it. You must, this is why I think you are a little too fast in that. This is why you must play it in such a way that it gives a finality to the piece. In other words, that when you get... Um, get up and take a bow and go home. <laughs> that feeling, that feeling of finality you must give it to the thing. <laughs> Real crescendo from each note. Now, um, uh, uh. It's too loud, it's too loud, it's too, loud. It's too soon. <laughs> doesn't matter, once more, doesn't matter. <laughs> Alessio. Mm. Now, drill. Yes. Now, don't go home. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Yeah, you see? Now I hear the connection between this and... I hear the connection before I didn't get the connection when you played with the pedal. This must, must be... When you play... You must really hear the connection. Please do it once more, eh? Hey, no, no. Don't cheat, really, for each one. you will get more strength if when you make the crescendo and you get to the level above 40 the drill is a little broader mm -hmm. less fast This is a very complex fugue. You know how many layers it has. You must use every opportunity that is available to you to come down. Otherwise, you will get too much accumulation of the sound and it will not fit anymore. So, okay, now. It's a good opportunity to go down because that's when you start the sort of the. the I think there is a little more to it than, than you are making, uh, more than a, just a collection of, of 16s. Also, change of color, a mm -hmm. little bit less, and certainly less. Now, listen. You see how it repeats itself, it turns obsessively around itself, and it comes back. Second time, sorry. You must design each and each and every one of this group. Play it once a little slower that you The same repeat figure. Now change. No, you remember you had twice, one line, and now you have Interrupted. Now it's interrupted. And come back. Yeah. 
What is the difference between the first time of the subject when it comes there and the one here? The, the interval. The interval is yeah. a much more tense interval. Yes. We must hear that. In other words, this uh, is not, I mean, just normal to you, but the ear expects and it gets. In order to build up such a complex and full structure, you must use every opportunity to come down when you can and every opportunity of change to point it out. Because when you point it out with a little more, immediately it gives you the possibility to come down. Mm -hmm. If you don't do that, it just accumulates from the theme. <laughs> can come back again you see you have you have to make this you have to say and here is the strain the strain expression of an augmented interval and then you say it was only temporary and we are back That's, uh, yes and now Third voice. Until now, you were in absolutely normal territory. You know, you didn't need, need a visa to go anywhere. It was all there. Now you have crossed the border. Now you are, and you're coming from here, and you're here suddenly. This you must stay. This you cannot allow yourself the luxury of coming down in the middle of the thing in order to save strength. You must first establish that. Once you have established that, then you can come down. Also, you are going into a transition into a soft section. That is coming. Therefore, you really need more sound. Maybe you should play it. From there, you should somewhere. This you, this, nothing happens. to play that amount of, of, of sound so that we know that we are somewhere else. And Now you can go less. 
coming to the end of a big session. Don't hurry, don't hurry, you know. You all, you have to say goodbye to everybody. Each, the, each one, you know. The end of the section, it's very, 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 you know, when you finally... <laughs> Somewhere else. <laughs> That's it. And then you go. Okay. I think this is all we have time for today. Thank you Bravo. Thank you. Bravo. Thank you. Questions? I think we've. I think we've, I have a feeling we have been through all the different subjects, but we certainly have time now for questions if you want. <laughs>